Okay. Okay. That means this is, um, I believe, this is the last uh, uh, new material, the last session. We, we still have the review, the final exam review session, but this is the last session covering the new stuff. And this is chapter 10 and section 10.4. Okay? That means we just learned about the new coordinate system, the polar coordinate system. And today we will try to find the areas which is bounded by the polar curves. Okay? That means let's see what we learn and let's see the new stuff. And I will switch off my video. It's just better connection. That means what we know. I have a nice picture for you to show you. Let's look at this. Oh, if I can change. Okay, that's what we do. We do have something like that. I know that everybody likes this picture. Uh, Cartesian coordinates, of course, the perpendicular distance from the x and the y axis, everything right angle, full Cartesian there. Or the polar coordinates, nice and smooth, and the angle is involved. That's when we can create theoretically any shape and we can get an equation. I don't have the equation of the polar bear, but we can see much, much nicer than the poor Cartesian bear. Okay, that means what we will do. Uh, we will try to get some polar curves and um, find the areas bounded by the polar curves. But again, before I start, I would like to check if we confident with the different shapes. That's what I have. I do have, let me, oh, okay, let's maybe start with this one. I have four equations and four graphs, and I would like everyone to try to match this. Let me maybe put A, B, C, and D, and one, two, three, and four. My screen is a little bit. Okay, that means this is one of the polar, which you probably learned yesterday, one of the polar curves. Uh, and we have to like recognize the shape and of course the equation. That means overall, the most generic, most general equation is written here. That we can see R equals, equals to A plus or minus B. And then we have sine theta or cosine theta. And now, when you will see this equation, which you can have on this side, and if the coefficient a and coefficient b, the number a and the coefficient b, a and b, are equal to each other, or oh, sometimes you can see this condition, but that's the same thing. a over b is 1, this means that a equals to b. If a and b is the same, and we have this equation, then we will always have this nice shape. Of course, different different position, we can see this nice heart, uh, different position, but this, th this is the equation and that's the condition. In our case, we can see that A equals to B and it's equals to one actually, okay? Because we have one A and one cosine, one sine. Okay, that's mean that's the shape. And probably you remember, we have a special nice name, the heart, uh, which is cardioid. Car, it's the Latin cardioid. Yeah, like the cardiologist, like the, the doctor for the heart. Because this is like a shape of the heart. This one is the, the, the most perfect position. Okay, that makes sure that you understand, that you know the name and the equation. And now let's match. Uh, we know that the polar coordinates, we need like the quantity r, the radius, the distance from the pole. This is pole, the origin from the Cartesian is the pole. And we need a corresponding angle. Okay? That's what we can do. Probably you can match right away, but we always have to check um, not 360 angles, but at least the four important ones. That means this is zero degree. This is 90, that's 180, this one is 270, and again, 2 pi, 360, and so on, okay? That means let's maybe take, just for now, the first equation, okay? I will take the first one. R equals to one plus 
<clears throat> cosine theta. And then we can check if theta is zero, if it's 90, 180, and three pi over two, 270. That means if, if theta is zero, then radius, the distance on the zero angle will be one plus cosine at zero. Cosine at zero is one, that means one plus one is two. That we can see on the zero angle, that zero, we have to have distance two. And this one looks like this, not this, not the first one, this one. And then again, if, if theta is pi over two, cosine at pi over two is zero, one plus zero is one. That means for 90, we need one. Okay, that means looks like from, from two to one. And then if, uh, if theta is pi, cosine at pi is negative one, one plus negative one is zero. That means makes sense, zero. For pi, we have no distance. And then again, for three pi over two, cosine is uh, again zero, one plus zero is one. That means for three pi over two, we do have distance one, okay? And then for pi, for two pi, will be the same situation like for zero, okay? That means the first equation, okay? The first equation match to the graph B, okay? And to, that means that I just went for the first one. Probably you did this yesterday on your yesterday session. But what is my point? My point is that you will recognize the equation, you will recognize the name, and now looking at these polar curves, if we have like wider graph or more values on the x-axis, which means the x-axis represents the zero degree and pi, zero, then we can always think about cosine because cosine at zero is one and one plus one is two that we can see this is wider wider on the on the x-axis this one c and d are like wider on the y-axis that means c and d probably are the sine related curves a and b are wider along the x-axis then they are related to cosine that means if this one is one plus cosine theta this one will be the second one one minus cosine theta. And now we can check uh, C and OD. This will be related, as I said, to sine. That means let's, let's maybe check. I will look at this equation, this third one. And I will do just in my head. Sine at zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. That means I need one. That means I do have, for zero degree, I have one, but I also have one here, okay? Uh, 90, sine at 90 is one, one plus one is two. Okay, that means this one is not good from one to two. This will be good. That means this is definitely the third equation. And then sine for pi is uh, zero, one plus zero is one. This should be actually positive one. That means from one to two for 90, from two to one for 180, and then it's zero and again one, okay? And then I have no option, this must be four. Okay, that, that means please remember, wider graphs on the x-axis means cosine is involved, okay? And wider along the y-axis, sine is involved. Okay, that means that's cardioid. Let's look at the next set. The next set is this one, okay? Similar, A, B, C, and D. And let's say one, two, three, and four. That means now we have similar shape, like cardioid. We can see almost, almost the same formulas. General form is the same, A plus or minus B sine cosine theta. But now A, it's not the same like B. However, the coefficient B, it's always greater, okay, than A. That means this, could be rewrite that B is greater than A. That means if we have this situation that this number, this coefficient is greater than the first one, B is greater than A, we will always have this shape, like a cardioid with the loop, which we have a nice special, I believe is the French name, we will call a Limasson, I don't know, it's even kind of like a comma, I think it's the French name. Limasson, that's the name of this polar curve. 
Okay, and now we can, since we know what we're looking for a little bit faster, we can probably match, like we can be more efficient. Because we can see the equation A, it's wider along the y-axis. I mean the graph A, the, the picture A, A and C. That means A and C are, gonna, are going to be involved with the sine function. B, it's wider on the x-axis, and D, then this will be cosine. And we can check. We can ch let's check A. A is definitely sine. That means maybe second, maybe plus, or maybe fourth. We will check. Okay, let's check the values. Sine at zero is zero. Then one plus zero is one. That we do have one. Oh, I can't write. Okay, one and one. Now let's check 90. Sine at 90, sine at 90 is um, 1. 1 plus 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. That means for 90 we need 3. Okay, we can see. That means this is definitely the second one. This will be the fourth one. Okay, and the same for cosine. Let's look at the first one. Okay, the cosine at 0 is 1. 1 plus, uh, I mean 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3, okay? That means it looks like this one. It's the first one. I don't even have to because this one doesn't have 3. Okay, and no other option. D must be 3. Okay, that we can see how fast we can check this. Okay, that we make sure that you know cardioid. Make sure that you know limo, limason. I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly. We also have this shape. Okay, or oh, maybe I can show you, oh, I'm missing, oh, I'm missing this one. Okay, I do have six, seven, eight, eight graphs. That means each of them is a little bit different. We can see now the general formula looks like that, cosine n theta or sine n, n theta. Okay, and now everything depends on n. Okay. First of all, because we, I would like to put the quick formulas for all of them, okay? It will be sine n theta or cosine n theta. You probably, from now, I hope, you can pause the video and you can just make the notes which one is cosine, which one is sine, okay? I know we don't have lots of students attending this session, but it's still, it's still worth to, to, to check. That means, as, as I said, now you can pause the video when, when you're watching and try to put just cosine or sine, okay? Okay, and now I will give you the answer. That we can see, let's look at the x-axis. That's what I was, yes, that's what I was trying to explain for the cardioid. Since the x-axis has some values, we can see value on the x-axis, value on the x-axis, value on the x, value on the x, or no value, zero on the x, zero on the x, zero like r on the x. That means all of them that they have value on the x, this will be cosine. Cosine, cosine, of course I need the angle. Cosine, and this will be cosine, and now no value, this will be sine. That means I'm really hoping you can write this okay now if if the number of loops is even even right this means that we did double the n number that means if we see four this was two n two i mean two theta two theta let's see this one one two three four one two three four five six seven eight that means if this is even eight we did double four. If actually, if the number is odd, we just keeping the same number. One, two, three, three theta. Okay, now one, two, three, four, five, we're keeping the odd like it is. Okay, that's what we're done. We can see how nice and easy. Now the sign, one, two, three, four, if it's even, we did double. To get four, we did have two theta. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We did double four. One, two, three. Odd number stays the same. Five stays the same. Okay? That means also it's nice to know how to get the formulas for these beautiful flowers.
and I think we call rose or um, yeah, like rose. I think four leaves, rose, and so on. Okay, and I I'm sure you did cover this one and this one yesterday, and I have some additional one. Okay, we also have um, something like that. Right? That means this one, since we're taking r squared, so we will not solve for r, but of course, solving for r, I have something like that. That means what this means. From my rows, we know that this is cosine of 2 theta is actually the, the four loops. Okay? But since I can only take a positive values because we have the square root, uh, probably looking at the graph, you will see that these two loops correspond to the negative. That's we just removing them. And the, the, be, the best thing is to just remember that if we have r squared cosine of 2 theta, it's only these two loops, on, of course, on the x-axis, on the 0 and 90, right, uh, 0 and 180, and if we have sine 2 theta, like r squared, we're removing the other loops, that we only have loops for 45, okay, 45, and this is uh, 4, 5 times 45, okay, that means just, just to remember, just in case if we have to recognize, okay, let me, that means I have just two multiple choice, uh, you may see questions like that, but I think this one is so easy. Identify the curve described by the equation r equals to 1 minus cosine theta. Of course, just from 0 to 2 pi. That means 1 minus cosine theta. We can see that 1 minus 1 cosine theta. It's definitely a cardioid. Not this, not this. Okay. A, B, or D. Right? And now we can see A is taking more space on the X on the zero degree and B. D is not good. D is probably sine. Okay, that's me. Let's just quickly check the values. Yes, which one is good? If theta is zero, 90, 180, 270, and let's say 2 pi. Then R is 1 minus cosine at 0. R is 1 minus cosine n. We did this, but just one more time for you to get more confident. Cosine at 3 pi over 2, and this will correspond to 0. Okay, cosine at 0 is 1, 1 minus 1, 0. Okay, that we do have. Let me do this way. My writing is. Okay, that's me. You will have the full solution. Okay, this one is one minus z. This one is zero. This one is one. This one is one minus negative one. It's two. One minus zero, one. And this one is one. Uh, zero. Okay? That means for zero degree we have zero. Oh, this one looks good. For 90 we have one. And for 180 we have two. For three, um, 270 we have one again. We can see this. And again zero. That's zero, 90, 180. Okay? That means it's not, it's the B value because we did corresponds, okay? And then I have one more. Identify the curve described by r equals to one plus two sine theta. Two, that we can see the coefficient b is greater than a. Two is greater than, that's a, that's b. That's we know that this must be the heart with the loop. Not this, not this, not this. Okay, and since it's sine, we need more values on the y-axis. We don't even have to do the values, okay? Okay, now let's start the areas. That's now what we need. We need all of these curves 
and we have to just find the areas which are bounded by the polar curves. What we will need, because we need some formulas, and I will try to develop, I mean show you, to, 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 to derive the formulas, but we will start, since everything is like angle related, uh, we will kind of have like a circle, not, 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 a, not the complete circle, I can say a sector of the circle. That we definitely have to understand the formula of the sector of the circle. That means part of the circle. And this is the formula. I can maybe write a little bit different. Theta over 2 r squared. Okay? It's one half r squared theta. But one half theta r squared. Uh, we probably remember this formula. It's kind of, uh, I, I believe the formula makes sense. Because let's, let's see. If we have, what I can do. If we have the, the full circle. Okay, I would like to show you something because we always have the, that we have the full circle, which the full circle is related to 2 pi, right? That's the full revolution, full circle. The area is pi r squared. We know that, right? But I would like to say it's related to theta 2 pi. Okay. Now, if I will ask for the area of half of the circle, okay, just half, which half will be related to 180, pi. That means you can write probably pi r squared over 2, right? Or maybe one more, oh, a quarter. Quarter is related to pi over 2. That mean quarter, you will say pi r squared over 4. That we can probably see the pattern. We see something like that. If the theta is pi over 2, in the formula we have pi. Right? We have half of this. If, if, the, angle is, oh, if the angle is pi, in the formula we have half of this, pi over 2. If the angle is pi over 2, we have half of this, pi over 4. That means it doesn't really matter what is the angle, always the formula for the area includes half of that angle and r squared. Yeah, that means this makes sense. If I have a sector, which I can write, which I have just theta, I don't know exactly, but it's theta, the area will be theta over 2 r squared. That's the reason that I wrote this way, okay? That we can see. If you will forget for some reason, you can always try to derive from the known formula pi r squared. Okay, that means angle divided by two and r squared. Okay, that means that's the nice sector of the circle. If we know radius, if we know the angle, we can get the area. And of course, the, the sector of the circle has this side straight, right? And this creates the nice, um, like the same distance, right? The radius is the same, the same for the entire angle. Okay, that means now what we will have, we will have a little bit, a little bit different situation. However, we will use the sector of the circle formula to help us to, to solve this difficult problem. Okay, that means now what we have. We have something like that. This will be the polar curve, and we will have some bounds, angle A and angle B. And we have to find the area of that region. Okay. Of course, we this is calculus two. I believe in calculus one, we, we are the cover the concept of the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, that we know that probably the integral will be involved. We also cover the idea of the, um, um, the area of the region bounded by two curves, which we will also use it. Okay? That's what we will do. We can see that um, looking at this region, if I will draw this radii, ra all of the, the radii, they are not the same. Right, they are not the same. That means I don't know. I can't really, I can't really use the sector, but I can use the, the the sector of the circle 
and I can approximate. That means let's look at this. Okay, this is the same thing. I will divide by these sectors, but each of them we can see because we need the same, we need the same like uh, distance, the, the radii. That means I will approximate each of these, uh, they're not really stripes, parts, sectors. I mean, each of these parts I will, I will approximate as a sector of, this, of the proper circle. Okay, and we know what's the formula for the sector. I need uh, one half, okay, that means the area of the sector is one half, and I need an angle, okay. I need the, the not the angle, I need, okay, no, I need the, I need angle. That means angle means this, which in this case will be d theta, which that's what I want to put. I will put on the um, at the end, and I need r squared. That means r squared is of course the radius, but the radius in this case is defined by the polar equation. Okay, I think I was writing previously theta over two r squared, but this is more if we have the circle. Let's switch the order. That means I need half of the radius squared, and I need that angle. That means this is the area of one sector. Now the idea, the concept of adding all of them together, right, will give me the approximation of the entire region bounded by the polar curve. That means what I have to do, let me write one more time, one half, of course the radius will be defined as a polar function and we have to square that and this will be and this is just one sector. If I would like to have all of them, let's say n, I will add all of them together, starting from one, ending with n. And the same thing, one half r, which is defined by the polar curve f of theta squared. And we know that sigma means that we're adding all of them, like from one, two, three, four, and so on. We also know that if n is, if we have infinitely many of them, then we have perfect approximation, right? That we have to say that n is actually infinity, n goes to the infinity. And we, I hope we recognize that the limit of the sum means the definite integral, right? That means one more time. Yeah, the same thing, we adding all of the sectors, one half r squared d theta, right, the angle, and we have all of, all of the areas from one to n, and if n is infinity, yeah, we do have a limit of the sum. Limit of the sum is simply a definite integral, okay? That means we don't have to, of course, remember how to derive the formulas, we have to remember this, right? In order to find the area bounded by the polar curves, we will integrate from A to B, one half r squared d theta. Okay. I can rewrite this from A to B, just r squared d theta. Okay, that's it. Actually, I do have this. So please, please remember about this one half, one half r squared d theta. Okay, and I have one more formula and then we can start to compute something. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we also have to know how to find the area which is bounded by two polar curves, okay? That's what we will do. Uh, oh, I do have the formulas, but let's see. We have the f, uh, f a function, f of theta and g of theta. That means if I will just say the integral from A to B, R squared, let's say the first one, the top one, R, the R sub one squared D theta. This will give me everything, right? This will give me from the origin, this will give me that region. If I will just integrate the top function. Now, if I will integrate from A to B, actually I can use different color. You probably know what I'm doing. 
from A to B, and if I will integrate on my this one, the second one. Oh, I just said one half is missing. That's my formula, right? Do you see? I just said do not miss the, the one half, and we miss, and I miss. Okay, that means one half r squared d theta represents the just the top function, the f function. That means the entire region. This one, this integral represents just below, below the g. That means now if I will take the red and I will subtract the blue, I will have the region of the golden part. That's what I want. The region bounded by these two curves. Because I will subtract the blue and I will end up with, let's say, green. I will end up with this part. Okay? That means that's actually nothing new. We have to simply subtract the longer radius minus the shorter one. Okay? Because I can't, I can't just say top function minus the bottom. That's what I will say if we will have Cartesian coordinates. But I have to subtract the longer radius and minus the shorter one. Then I have the distance between, I mean the area between. Okay? Because what is important to know, I can, mm, I can draw something for you. Let's have, let's have the, maybe the this, oh no, I can actually write function g and function f. And we would like to get that, uh, that region. Okay, that's when we can see it looks like function g is on the top, but we're not really looking, we're not re really looking through the like Cartesian perspective. We're looking from like the polar coordinates perspective. That we can see we still will we will still say this is the shorter radius. And okay, I can use the red one, and this is the longer. That means in order to find this red area, we will still say the f a function minus the g function okay? that's what because if we are below it looks different but we still we still have to say the function with the longer one which this will be the one half r sub one squared and this will be r sub two okay that means it's still the same formula Okay, that means that's what we have to know. If we have one curve, we're just using this formula. If we have two curves, we have to subtract longer radius minus the shorter one. And I do have, okay, I put, I type the f and g function, but it's the same thing, r sub one, r sub two. Okay, and remember about this one half. Okay? And everything, of course, is in the polar coordinates. Okay, that we have to, uh, not always the A and B, the angle A and the angle B will be provided, that we have to remember that we have to find the points of the intersection, and this will probably give me my bounds of the loop of the region. Okay, let's start. Example number one. Find the area enclosed by one loop, one loop, of the four leaf rows r equals to cosine of two theta. Probably we will not provide for you the picture, okay, I did, but please remember, yeah, this is one of the curves that we should know. Okay, r cosine theta, r cosine two theta. That means we have four loops because it's two, we have to double, and we have the loops on the x axis and actually y two, but wider on the x, and one loop. That means we definitely know that this is 45. Okay, this will be negative 45. Okay, that means one loop. Mm, let me write just the formula. From A to B, one half R squared D theta. Because it's just one curve involved. That means I can say from A to B, one half and simply cosine two theta squared d theta, okay? And now a and b, this we can nicely see from negative pi over four to positive pi over four. 
I can put one half in front from negative pi over four to positive pi over four, and I can write this way, cosine squared to theta, okay? The only thing that we will probably use, because it's, it's gonna be the multiple choice question, we may notice that because the cosine sine is involved, we always have lots of symmetry. Even in this case, we can try to define the area of the, I mean, of the, the integral, which represents the area, just of half of the loop, right? And then I can multiply by two because this is exactly symmetrical. That means I can change my formula, my limits of integration from zero to pi over four, cosine squared to theta d theta, but I have to multiply by two because I have two of those. Okay, that means I have to multiply by two. That means please remember multiplying by two. And now two times half will give me, of course, one. That means the final integral that represents the area of one loop is this one. I know that the question asks find, which means we have to evaluate this. Okay, but I think I type the solution for you. I have the solution. That means you can definitely look at this next slide. I can come back for a minute. But what I can tell you, mostly for this section, 10.4, .4, we will just ask you to set up an integral. That means that's what I did. We will ask you to set up an integral which represents the area of the desired region. Okay, that means cosine squared two theta d theta from zero to pi over four and one half is gone because of that too. Okay, and actually for the final test, we still have to remember how to integrate cosine square or sine square of theta to theta. And that will, but that will be probably a different question. And I can show you this. Let's look at that part. That's what I wrote. We can see one half is gone but the limits of integration are changed. And to integrate cosine square, we have to use half angle formula. One half, one plus cosine of the double. Yeah, because two theta is half of the four theta. And then we can integrate. That's when you can try to get this one. But as I said, probably will be different question. For this section, we just like you to set up an integral. Okay. Mm. Example number two. Again, find the area. We will probably just set up the integral. Did I type the... Oh, hang on. Oh, I didn't type the solution. Okay, let's, let's see what we will get. Find an area of the region that lies inside the curve one plus sine theta which I draw this curve, that's the cardioid, and outside the curve R equals to one. Oh, we didn't really do the review for that curve, but I hope you remember, R equals to a constant is just the circle. with center zero, zero, and that's the radius one. That means this will be a circle. Okay, R equals to one. Oh, that's the points of intersection. That means this one is r equals to one, and let me use different color for this one. One plus sine theta. Again, probably the picture will be not provided. Uh, okay, that's we do have this, and we do have this. Since we can see the nice picture, okay, let's actually find the area, I mean the region. That's what we need. We need inside, inside the cardioid and outside the circle. Okay, that means looks like, uh, what color I can use? I can use actually green. We need this part, inside the cardioid, outside this. 
Also on that picture, we can see nicely these red dots, which are the points of the intersection. But let me actually start, we, we always have to start having two curves, we should compute points of intersection, because this will give me the bounds for my integration. One curve, one plus sine theta must be equals to one, another one. And then I can subtract one from both sides. Sine theta is zero. Sine is zero for zero, uh, for pi, for two pi, and so on. That we can see zero and pi. Of course, we will not double. I mean, we will not duplicate since it's periodic function. Okay, that means zero and pi, that's my angles. Okay, that means now we can nicely see. To find the area, I have to integrate from zero to pi, we can see from zero to pi, and the longer radius minus the shorter one. Um, hang on, one half r squared minus one half another r squared d theta. The top one, this one is the second one. And what I was using, I was using the green, one half r, this is the first one, squared, okay? That means that's my integral from zero to pi. One half and one half I can put outside. The green function is one plus sine theta squared, and the red function is just one. Okay, and as I said, we can probably leave it like that. We will not integrate this because that's, we can get really like, it can get really messy. We really like to see that you setting the integral correctly. However, one thing is missing, the symmetry. Right? Because my limits of integration are from zero to pi. I can see that this is definitely, definitely symmetric, and I can cut this in half. Okay? That means the area will be defined by the integral from zero to pi over two only. And still, this function squared and one squared d theta. And since this is only half, I have to multiply by two. Okay? And two times half will be gone. But always remember, if the half is gone, check the limits of integration, not pi, halfway, pi over two. Okay? And I think this will be the final answer. That's what we're looking for. And you don't have to evaluate. Maybe one squared will be one. <laughs> Okay, and of course, this will be gone completely because this is one. Okay, let's see. That's that's nice question. I, I have ready. Oh, even better. Again, probably the picture will be the graph will be not provided, but let's see if we can get this. Find the area of the region that lies inside the circle. Okay, that's another circle. Mm, actually. Let me use the red, this will correspond to the graph. Three times sine theta and the cardioid, which we know, one plus sine theta is this way, okay? Also, the, because we know the this, this circle, let me just, like if this is one or two or three, this will be just the circle like that. Like let's say three, with the radius three. We can also we also have just sine theta and cosine theta. Okay, that means sine theta will only take place in the first and the second quadrant, right? Because sine is positive in the first and the second quadrant. Cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. That means that will be, and that's the center, of course. That will be the corresponding formulas. If this is free, this will be just free. Okay, then I can put free. Okay, that's make sure that we know the circles also. Okay, I will remove that. 
because we would like to set up an integral. Okay, that means we can nicely see, but again, we have to start with points of intersection. One plus sine theta must be the same like three sine theta. Uh, if I will subtract sine, I will have two sine theta, it's equal to one, and dividing by two, we have sine theta equals to half. Sine for what angle is half? Of course, we can see this, pi over six or five pi over six. That means that's the points of intersection. That's how, where they intersect and that's our limits. And let me put pi over 2 because we will use it. Okay, that means the area, the integral that represents the area, it's from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, and then 1 half r squared, 1 half r squared, the top and the bottom. Or the longer, that's the first one, and that's the second one. First one and the second one. We can see the longer minus the shorter, okay? Let's make nicer. I will put one half in front, pi over six, five pi over six, and r squared minus another r squared, d theta. The top one is three sine theta, and the bottom one is cardioid, one plus sine theta. Okay. That means make sure that you have squared, make sure that you have half, subtraction, and the correct, correct equations. You probably know what I'm gonna do. I will multiply, I mean, I will use the symmetry and I will change the limits from pi over six to pi over two. That means I'm changing for pi over two and multiplying by two because then I will cover, my integral is only half, but multiplying by two, I am covering the second part. Okay, that means that's the final answer. And you don't have to evaluate for this question, of course. And I think I have the solution for you. Okay, you can see where is my, yeah, that's a little bit crazy, but that's the integral that I wrote for you. And I still have half, oh, this is giving me two and pi over two, okay? I did change. And then all of this calculation, and you can, you can practice, but as I said, the most important is to set up an integral. Okay, I have a few more. Jesse, are you okay? I'm not really asking you a question because you, I don't wanna, uh, yeah, like, okay, thank you. Thank you very much that, yeah, that you're still with me. That's really, really kind of you. Okay, let me, okay. Yeah, I, I think my instructions are not correct. Probably on your test, on your quizzes, you will just see the setup and integral, which actually, okay, oh, I do have the multiple choice, which we will finish with this. Okay, that, because I'm ty I type find the area. Find the area means that you have to complete the integral, but we will just set up an integral. Okay, find the area of the region that lies inside the circle and outside the other circle. Okay, for this one, I don't have a graph. We will try to get a graph. I can write 0, 90, 180, because that's the, that's the polar plane, right? I shouldn't really put x and y. Okay, two cosine theta, we know that this is the circle in the first and the fourth, oh, this is supposed to be a circle. First and the fourth quadrant, and this is two, because it's two. That means this is my first curve. And this one, let's make it green, is just um, um, one with a circle with the center zero zero and radius one. Oh, okay. One, one, one. Let's pretend that this is circle. 
uh, we need points of the intersection. That means let's maybe find this one and then I will finish my graph. Points of intersection. Two cosine theta must be the same like one, right? This one the same like this one. That's the second curve. Cosine theta I can divide cos two cosine theta I can divide by two. I have half. Cosine for what angle is half? I think it's for 60. And for the fourth quadrant, I can I can write actually I can put negative pi over three, right? Because this will be that angle pi over three or negative pi over three. I could also say um, uh, why well, five, not five. Uh, uh, three, four, four pi over three? No, five. Why I can't get the positive? Um, 300. What is 300? Five times, okay. Five pi over, am I right? Five pi over three? It's the same like this one? Uh, five times 60 is 300 and six yeah okay okay just <laughs> i don't know for some reason doesn't make sense but it is makes sense. that means if we like the negative notation of course it's negative pi over three if we like the positive notation is five pi over three the same thing okay i think it's nicer to have negative pi over three but that's still fine uh okay let me actually remove this because this is Okay, let me now let's actually shade the region. Lies inside, inside the red circle and outside the green. That means this looks like this part. This one and of course this one. Okay, that's what we can nicely see. We have to integrate from negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3, right? And the longer radius, I mean, I can put the formulas. One half r squared minus one half r squared. But this one is the longer. Two cosine theta. This one will be the first one. And this one is just one. Mm. One. Okay, that means this one will be the second one. Let's put one half outside from negative pi over three to positive pi over three, the first one minus the second one, which the longer one or the shorter one, the longer, the longer radius is defined two cosine theta minus one squared, of course. Okay, that means that's the integral, but let me write the final one because as you can guess, I'm gonna use the symmetry. From zero, I will only integrate this part. It means I will have from zero to pi over three, we can see from zero to pi over three, two cosine theta squared minus one squared d theta, one half is part of the formula, but one half will be gone because I have to multiply by two because I have only half of the uh, region covered. Okay, and one half and two is gone. And make sure that you're looking correctly at your limits of integration. Okay, let me box this. Oh, okay, that means that's. And that's the nice integral. Okay, and let's look at my two multiple choice, one and two, and we will be done. That's me. Let's see if we can get the answer. That's what we probably we're gonna see. Now it's proper instruction <laughs> setup, but do not evaluate an integral expression for the area inside the curve, one plus sine theta, and outside the curve r equals to three halves that we know this one is a cardioid okay this one is a circle 
let's start with points of the integration and then I will draw the picture. One plus sine theta, the first curve, must be equal to the second one, three halves. That means subtracting one, I have half. Sine, for what angle is half? For pi over six and five pi over six. I think we have this today. Am I right? Pi over six and five pi over six. Okay. So now let's see. Mm. The, this is cardioid. Sine at zero is zero. That's when we will have one and then two. Okay, that means this is the cardioid this way. Oh my card. Yeah, I think it's this. Okay, I'm not gonna meet. Oh. Okay, it's not, not bad. One plus sine theta, because for zero is one, for 90 is one, one plus one is two. Okay, that means that's correct. Of course, everything is nice and symmetric. And this is definitely one, two, one, and zero. Now we have three halves. Oh, okay, a little bit wider. This is just the circle. That means three halves is somewhere, oh wow. Oh. That's supposed to be a circle, but my Ooh, three halves. Okay, you have to believe me that this is circle. Three halves, three halves, and this will be three halves if I will make longer. Okay. Probably the cardioid should be a little bit like wider, but everything looks good. Oh, we do have points of intersection. That means that's the angle that I just computed. Pi over six. And this should be nice and symmetric, but you know that it is five pi over six. Okay, and we're looking for inside the red and outside the green which you can, now I can use what color? Let me use different golden. Inside and outside. And I will definitely involve pi over two. Okay, now we can see, we can use half of this, right? Because that's the same thing. I mean, both of the parts are the same. That means I will definitely integrate from pi over six to pi over two. Right, pi over six to pi over two. Let me say this. One half from pi over six to pi over two, and right away I will multiply everything by two because it's half. One half is part of the formula. R squared, R squared. First one and the second one. The first one is this one, and the second one is just three halves. That we can see, instead of r sub one, we have to substitute one plus sine theta. Instead of r sub two, three halves. That means which answer is correct? Um, which answer? One half times two is gone. That we have no coefficient from pi over six to pi over two. Looks like the a. You can probably see faster than me. But I believe that's my integral. R sub one is one plus sine theta, correct. Three half squared is nine over four, correct. And the limits are correct from pi over six to 90 and half is gone because it's times two, okay? That we can see, that's what we will ask. We will just ask for the settings. We don't have to evaluate, too complicated, but we like to see the settings. Okay, and one more and you will be an expert in finding the areas in polar coordinates. Okay, similar. Which integral represents the area that lies inside a circle, three cosine theta, and outside a cardioid? Okay, shall we start with points of the intersection, as always? Uh, three cosine theta, must be the same like one plus cosine theta. Subtracting cosine theta, 
I have this. Dividing both sides by two, I have this. Cosine for what angle is half? For pi over three? Oh, we have the same situation. Now I'm confident, five pi over three. Or let's say negative pi over three because it's smaller value. But that's the same thing. Um, Am I right? Yes, because it's the first and okay. That means now let's try to get the graphs. Oh, I don't know if I'm good. Okay, this one is just the circle R cosine theta in the first and the fourth quadrant, but the diameter is three. Okay, I can actually keep this. That's three. Okay, that means this one is the first one. Okay, cosine. Let me use different color, green, for the second one. That's cardioid, okay, but we don't know the, it's like a heart, but we have to know the position. Cosine at zero is uh, one. One plus one is two, okay, that's me, I will have two. And then cosine at 90 is zero, one, okay, one. And then cosine at pi is negative one plus one zero. Okay, that means it's actually this way. Mm. This one oh. should be a little bit more like nice bubble. I don't know if I can. Okay, let me keep it this way. Okay, this is two, one, zero, one. Okay, nice cardioid. And we're looking for inside, inside the red, outside the green. That means it's again that part, this entire part. We have points of intersection computed really nicely. That's the angle, pi over three. And another angle, which I will put three pi over. Um, negative pi over three. Okay, you probably know that we will involve the symmetry. Okay, that means an integral will be half, but multiply by two. I'm, I like to use the blue two. <laughs> From zero to pi over three, and the longer curve minus, I mean the longer radius, minus the shorter one. But hang on, let me check. I Okay, I think I'm right. Because sometimes my one and two doesn't correspond. But this is my one, which is three cosine theta. And my second one is one plus cosine theta. Okay, that means this is the integral. Let's see which one from zero to pi over three, that's wrong, that's wrong. Oh. Uh, three cosine theta, shall I write maybe the final answer? Because I'm trying to, from zero, oh my integral is not, I can't squeeze it. Mm, from zero, to pi over three, nine cosine square theta minus one plus cosine theta squared, d theta. I mean, I did square the, the first one. I think the answer d looks like my answer. From zero to pi over three, nine cosine square minus the second curve squared, okay? That means this is the answer. I hope you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the longer radius minus the shorter radius. The limits of integrations are correct. Half is gone, we are, but we can see the half is gone for all of them because of the symmetry. That's the theta. Okay, that means that's my last question. That means you can see this question and this one, they look like the question that you can expect. Yeah, you know, we don't have to evaluate, you have to just set up the integral. Okay, that means that's everything for today. Thank you.